Asia for us is a is a massively exciting market. It has a l lineage already in sport, yeah. but I do think that given the demographics, given the populations, given the fresh alignments that governments really have now understood between sport mm. and physical well-being, and particularly the real agenda item for me is physical activity. It's not actually sporting participation, although actually sporting participation is probably the best way, one of the better ways of addressing the physical inactivity issue. In simple terms, half the population of China, half the population of the UK, the USA, Brazil, are all gonna be physically inactive within the next 20 years, and that's a massive drag anchor on global economies, and I think sport can play a huge role in that and the smart brands are now beginning to recognise that there is a health agenda. Sport is a great way of activating, but the, the big agenda that has got the alignment of governments and, and third sector agencies is really physical inactivity, which I think is going to be the, it's the ticking time bomb. If you look at the work that HSBC have done around rugby, it's not just the elite side of rugby, it's about participation, it's about coaching, it's about broadening the appeal of the sport. It's the, the other big area, of course, is, is gender balance. And some of the more challenging, you know, one, one of the more challenging groups, of course, is young girls. Yeah. And there can be cultural reasons for that as well. You know, if you look at most of the brands that we work with in sport are now wanting to activate way, way beyond simply, you know, just showcasing the big, you know, jaw-dropping moments, which are important. Mm. But I think we all recognise whether we're in sporting federations or whether we're in brands, that you know that the, the, the actually the public expect more now they're much more demanding than they were a few years ago the old-fashioned concept of sponsorship if it ever really existed is is sort of withering on the vine you know when when we were pulling the brands together for the london 2012 games it, it was a very very clear process because in an Olympic venue you don't have advertising you can't amortize everything in two weeks of high intensity hospitality and brand awareness because first of all you can't advertise in the stadium so that actually means that there's a real onus on you embedding the brand in the sport embedding the, the sport the event in the brand and spending time doing that. The good sports and the good organisations actually spend a lot of time understanding a great deal about the brand, the structure, the DNA, where does that brand want to be in five years, 10 years time? And then a good sport will figure out how it can help that brand get to where it is, whether it's around excellence or greater footfall in a showroom or you know, if it's a car company that wants to be preeminently the cleanest car company on the planet, or if it's an energy business that wants to meet its sustainability criteria. Yeah. So the great thing about sport is it can be multifaceted and it can actually help in so many different areas. Although it can often be a sporting environment, brands will often find other ways within that sporting environment to activate. I'm on the Coordination Commission for Tokyo, so you know I think there'll be a spectacular games. Interestingly, the 1964 games in Tokyo, the last time they were there, focused on technical development. Japan were very smart in using it as an, in a way, as a segue to starting to carve out market space in that particular sphere. The first games that were televised globally by satellite television were in Tokyo, and this time. I think Tokyo are also focusing on technological advancement and of course it's a different, completely different planet. Uh, but they've also got a big chunk 
around innovation and encouraging more young people to take up sports. So th these games will have five new sports, including surfing and skateboarding and things like that. So they're really obviously trying to tap into, you know, younger audiences and younger participation. There's going to be a lot of stuff around athlete welfare. I think they're going to look, about, look at the way the sport is presented on screens and not just the television screen, the secondary, even the tertiary screens that our kids, our grandchildren are now looking at. It's going to be a lot more data-based. I think you'll probably find that they're going to spend a lot more time figuring out how they can explain some of the science and technology around human performance which hasn't always been done as well as it could do. And there's a lot of interest in that for kids. I mean, I always feel slightly frustrated when you watch marathons being presented on television. You know, it would, for, mo it, for a lot of people, it would be really interesting. You know, we talk about hitting the wall. Well, what does that mean? You could show that quite cleverly on a screen by, you know, how energy levels are being depleted the further you run. I think there's a real way of introducing young people to some quite interesting scientific concepts through sport. 75% of the people involved in my sport say that they want to see innovation and the key innovation they want to see is the way sport is presented in, in the stadium and on television and, and on the internet. So I, I think that Japan will certainly be exploring that kind of stuff.